Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, really? Oh yeah, look. If you're expecting, oh, it's really loud. If you're expecting a highly polished performance, yeah, yeah. well, that's why we've got Asher on the tech over there. <laughs> so uh, please be really warm for our acts. Be really warm for us. It's been a long time since we've had faces in this arch, and we're really, really happy to have you. But we will, I'll get really frightened if everyone's just standing there like this. Back there, just see if you really are a professional. He's got three plates. He's a cheat. <laughs> okay, now the first thing, well, I'll just give you a quick lesson in just work out which hand you would throw your custard pie in. You're going to need to know, remember this for later. Okay, you know that? And if you were standing up, stand up. Just practice standing up and sitting down with your plates. Standing up. To, and just see if you can actually hold a plate behind your shoulder. All right, you're doing good. Just remember what you did and don't lose your plates. We'll be back. We're back. Just have a, have a look at each other as well. And look at each other in the eyes. Okay. Very good. Um, what, what's, what's next? Why, oh, go housekeeping. Really, really important housekeeping message. Really, pay attention. If there's a fire, leave really quickly through that door. Um, yeah, no, just get out. Get out. That is the only exit, and it's rated for more people than are here. So it's all right. It should all be fine. But just leave, please, and then we'll deal with it. Um, if we, no one's seen Dialing 999, the fire brigade is just there, and someone can just bang on the door. Perfect. We've got a lot of acts tonight. Um, the thing that I was about to say was that, oh, we've got performance artists and we've also got a visual artist over there, so do make sure you go and see Izzy and see some of her work. Uh, we're going to have some questions about it later, so you'll see a little video over there, and it's well worth the study if you catch my drift. Uh, we also have uh, a mystery bin prize. It is a pound to enter, and you'll win whatever's in the mystery. It wasn't even rehearsed. <laughs> Good job, you guys. Uh, and that brings us to our first act of the evening. Uh, you, well, you know all about them. Oh, yes, I do. I remember this is the sciencey one, because I'm a little bit of a closet geek. Uh, one of my favorite things is the Ig Nobel Awards, if you know those. Yes, they're... they're a real amazing science award that rewards the most bit of science that has made people smile in its discovery process. Fantastic concept. We work with that spirit. And um, we've got a, an anthropologist here. Without a two to do, let's introduce Sam Legg. And behave, because you might be being watched. It all goes in. Over to you, Sam. Hello? All right, it's working. Brilliant. Okay. Georgia, Helvetica, Geneva to Homer. But then there's Windings. Not every font is named after a place, but Sans Serif is one that is. Nevertheless, it remains apparent that there is a prejudice against this island outside the filter bubble of typographers. For example, Cyril Duff from London recently contacted me regarding COVID travel bans, stating, 
I am sure that many older Guardian readers will be sorry to learn that the list of countries that we are now allowed to visit does not include Sansari. And this is despite the population having maintained a world record of zero COVID cases over the past two years. Having just passed the 45th anniversary of the Guardian's discovery of the island, tonight's Potterama special will be investigating the conspiracies surrounding its non-existence and providing televised proof that it actually does exist. These conspiracies have often been used as an excuse to ignore the island and its citizens, also known as the Flong. In recent years, such conspiracies have gained such traction that Google has even removed Sansuri from its map service. Our correspondent, Michael Sullivan, has more. when the Guardian first published its now infamous piece on the island nation of San Suri. A nation that until this point had remained independent of the global stage of what we now call modern civilization. And for that brief moment in April of 1977, the world truly knew of the glory that was San Suri. But why is this? Why does the world stage fear this little nation? Some equate this fear to the growth and peace the island has continually experienced under the long rule of General M.J. Peter. That, if our Western societies took notes from the rich book of knowledge that Peter has typed for them, then perhaps the West would experience similar coups that would punctuate the start of a new era for our society. This is why our government hide this land from us, as to keep their hands tightly clasped around the notes of power. Though this has started to change as influences from Sans Suri have permeated into British politics, though officially a different story is typed, the truth is within the halls and walls of Westminster. Amongst high-ranking MPs, it is well known that our conservative government have been especially influenced by the plights of Sansari, especially in regards to the EU's tactless dismissal of this nation. Former Prime Minister David Cameron, in an interview with myself, once remarked, if the EU won't extend the hand of friendship to this much beloved tourist destination, then why? Why should we remain? It is clear to myself that the Conservatives' decision for holding a referendum around our status in the EU wasn't Mr Cameron's pathetic whimperings to keep his grip on the fading light that was his Prime Ministry, but was actually a selfless signal to the ones who knew, to the ones who know, that Sansari's spirit for freedom lived within the British. Further to this, our current Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has confided within myself in an interview, stating, I truly believe our government can set a strong friendship of trade with General Pika. They are the only nation we should need other than Rwanda. A clear reason for why Mr Johnson so poorly executed his negotiations of trade with other nations. He clearly wants Britain to only trade with the best. I could talk for hours on the importance of Sans Serif and the importance this small nation has played in shaping modern Britain. But most would not believe it. Well, until today, the Potterama team have been given exclusive access to the works of geologist Ariel Nova, who, on a recent excavation, found definitive proof of Sansarif's existence. A special type of geological construct that could only form on the beaches of Sansarif, specifically in this instance, the beaches of Garamondo. For legal reasons, we are only allowed to share with you these images of the constructs. Catching up with Ariel, 
after the dig, she said, This is it. Period. There's no other landmass that could form such unique specimens. Patarama will continue to unearth this story as it moves forward. But for now, back to you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Booking a trip to the island has never been easy, especially if you're an Uber driver who confuses the Indian Ocean with a restaurant near Wandsworth Common. It therefore comes as no surprise that when Peter Preston received letters of complaint from airlines and travel agents due to the abundance of customers who expressed interest after his publication in 1977, he was forced to retire as editor of The Guardian no less than 18 years later. Nevertheless, some people have managed to go. We had originally planned to have an interview with the renowned anthropologist Marvin Mead. However, he was not able to attend tonight, but has provided us with his hat and some cue cards. Therefore, I shall attempt to recreate an interview experience with myself. Try not to trip over. Well, Dr. Marvin Mead, as I've been telling my friends about this impending trip of mine to the Southern Sea, I keep getting the stereotype of the happy savage. You know, the carefree people dancing the hula all day on tropical islands with swaying palm trees and breezes and all. Would you care to disclose whether I am correct in such assumptions? Well, some people describe it like a horrible malaria-infested swamp. Dr. Malinowski, for instance. This is just something people have cooked up in their heads. For even in Catford, you can find fairly trusting, happy, warm people. Although, I've certainly observed a change in morale over time, leading to a more recluse attitude amongst the flong to Western civilization. So, it's now been 55 years since the island became independent, as Geoffrey Taylor wrote in The Guardian on the 1st of April 1977. Rapid growth brings its own problem, not all of which can be solved in total composure. As you mentioned previously, your last visit was during 50th anniversary celebrations. Can you please tell us how their phosphate, oil and tourist industries are doing now? and whether they have managed to cope with the rapid growth in their economy, which Taylor discussed. Well, I must say that it's a real shame that they've tightened the borders a lot over the past 45 years. Even more so now, what with their currency being named Corona, naturally prohibiting them from international trading due to banknotes being unable to legitimately receive a vaccination. With regards to the other industries, my time spent with a group of labourers near Pel Port Elrod on the upper case of the island taught me that the quality of produce from other countries was incomparable with what they could produce. A lack of tertiary education services such as colleges or universities has not helped this, nor has the refusal of Primark's chief executive, Paul Merchant, to respond to any postcards sent from the island, expressing very serious business propositions. Considering the island is so close to India and China, places that experienced similar economic booms in the late 1900s, there is certainly now a lot of hostility towards the West due to their outright refusal to admit that they even exist. Thank you. It's worth noting that one of the most cited pieces of evidence for the island not existing 
is the Guardian's article, which was published on April 1st. Of course, this is a Western holiday, which the news is renowned for not being very trustworthy. So why should we trust the Guardian to share reliable information on this state, when other reliable outlets have tricked people into believing that spaghetti grows on trees? Well, firstly, Michael, comparing the legitimacy of an island with the legitimacy of spaghetti growing on trees is disgusting. It's really quite shameful. Not only have the Flong been misrepresented as fictional citizens by the likes of Redditors and whatnot, but to even suggest that the lies of spaghetti growing on trees are even in the same league as an island's existence is a complete disgrace. Just because news articles are published on the same day does not mean they have the same status or reputability. Take this year, for instance. The Guardian's front page article was, millions rush to minimize energy bills on the eve of Black Friday. Is this a joke? No. It's something very serious, affecting both my, and I'm sure your, loved ones too. Even the more traditionally bizarre content published in that paper, such as a UK plumber landing a record and movie deal after being overheard singing on the job, a real article by the way, was even shared by the BBC. We just have to look at the facts. I visited the island. Major world companies operate in the area. Guinness and Kodak, to name just a few. To blame a date for a blockade, travel ban, and eradication from geography lessons is inexcusable. Thank you. That's all for now. Next week, we'll be looking at the agency of garden gnomes and investigating the ontological term's influence on the Cornish's interaction with inanimate objects. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sam Legg. Uh, Caitlin, I've got your beer, Cato, just so you know. It's there. We're preparing for the next game. Are we doing the game now? Okay, we're, we're about to do a game. It's, it's the theme. It's the theme. We've, we've, we've got a theme of tea coming on, which we'll, we will be repeating. We do quite a lot of repeating. And here we go. Okay, are you all ready for a game? Good, very good. So get to know the people in your row. They're going to be, yeah. Hi, 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 hello, mate. Hello, hi, everyone. There's you. God, you still are there. Ah, oh, look at you. Oh, so. Not too much, not too much. Okay, so this is the game. This is a game called Tea Duels. And the game is played like this. We're going to bring you, at the end of your row, we're going to bring you a cup of tea. Eh, yeah, I know. Um, if, you are a, uh, if you are a vegan, I'm really, really sorry, but this is not the game for you, okay? This, yeah, I'm, re I'm really, really, really sorry. Uh, so, on this side of the row, you will be presented with a cup of tea. We will dunk a biscuit into the tea for five seconds, and then, yeah, I know. It's dicey, isn't it? And then we're going to take the biscuit out. Three. Well, we'll try it with five, and if it falls apart on someone's lap, then we can do it again. Then you have to take the biscuit out and hold it upside down like this without it falling apart and pass it all the way down the row, and the person at the end has to eat it. The row that is the fastest will win a delightful prize. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. 
All right, we're coming around with the tee. Okay, very important, very important. Bit of hush, bit of hush, bit of hush. Hey, 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 hey. Quiet down, you lot. Okay, you will get a chance to talk in a second because you've got a very, very important decision to make. Well, because we have a selection of biscuits. Hey, we've got... Oh, they're all upside down, aren't they? Custard creams. Will the custardy filling help with the integrity of the biscuit once it is dipped? Only time will tell. We have rich tea biscuits. This is exactly what they were made for. Will you pick the rich tea? We have milk chocolate digestives. Oh, fan favorite. And we have, can I give you those ones? Thank you. Oh, ginger snaps. Yeah, solid, dependable, dependable. I'm gonna come around with them. So you're gonna have a, you have a little moment to talk among yourselves, which one you're gonna pick. And you better tell the person on the end because they're the ones that are gonna have to relay the message. Okay, row number one. What is your team name? Custard creams. And this, what biscuit have you selected? You've gone for a custard cream, have you? Okay, so we've got custard cream in row one. Row two, what biscuit have you got? Custard cream, do you have any inkling towards a team name? Great, soggy biscuit. Okay, so we've got the custard creams and soggy biscuit. Row number three, what have you got? Row number three, what have you got? You've got custard cream as well. You're gonna be disappointed when you find out that the ginger snap has a better integrity, but uh, be it on your head. All right, row number four, what have you got? Ginger snap, yeah, 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 ginger snap. And row number five, ginger milk. Have you already dunked it? You're not supposed to have dunked it yet. You haven't dunked it yet. Okay, great. Oh, oh your team name's Milky Mess. Okay, okay. I thought you were just describing the state of the back row. <laughs> okay, here we go. You've got your tea. So now, when your biscuit makes it to that side, you will have to eat it. 
swallow it and have your mouth open and go, yeah, yeah, me, me, me. Okay, otherwise we won't know. So, and then we'll come to you. We're going to assess. We're going to check. Are you ready? We're going to dunk it for five seconds. It's going to be tricky. Okay. Has everyone got a biscuit? Everyone's ready? Ah, good. Excellent point. Let's clarify on the technicality. I expect you to take your biscuit and do, see how your fingers are holding it right at the bottom. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. It's a, no, don't do that. It's a game. It's a game, it's a game about dunking biscuits in tea. Don't try and cheat. I can see you. You're gonna take your biscuit, you're gonna hold it like right on the edge. And then you're gonna dunk it fully, as much as you can. Oh yeah. Well, at least, all right, fine. At least three quarters, at least like up to, right there. Like that. In. For five seconds. I'm spinning a bit of a biscuit. Okay. Teacup holders, are you ready? Passing teammates, are you ready? I hope you've got a technique. On the end, no vegans. Are you all ready? Excellent. Here we go. And dunk your biscuit. Five, four, three, two, one, and pass. And pass. Get it to the end. That's it. Don't let it crumble. Don't let it fall apart. That's it. Get it all the way to the end. Whoa! Soggy biscuits! Hold, hold, hold. Hold. What do you say, Roger? Are they clear? Yep. Ooh. Okay. All <laughs> right, we'll go again, we'll go again. It's, pretty, it's good fun, isn't it? Huh? You can't pick the same biscuit. Right. Are we just doing those two rows? Okay, so which, two, which teams are those ones? Front row and row three. So we've got the custard creams and the soggy biscuits. And which one? What's row three? What's your name? And the gin oh, ginger nuts versus custard creams. Okay, here we go. I'm coming around with the Vicky. Oh, you have to use a rich tea. You have to use a rich tea. And this time, and this time, five seconds, too short. I knew it was. I knew it was too short. He said three seconds. <laughs> We're going to dunk it for 10 seconds. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's impossible, they said. It can't be done, they said. You can do it. Okay, are you ready? Have they got the biscuits? You've, you've got the biscuits. Okay, everybody. So, Rose, you haven't got, a, oh, they haven't got a biscuit. You've got one job. There you go. Get your passing technique in. Get your passing technique. Yeah, very good. Don't skip anybody. Ten seconds, baby. Ten seconds and the rich tea. Here we go. And everybody else, rows two, four, and five. We're going to count it down really loud. Here we go. Have we got our biscuits in our tea? You ready to go? Okay, and dunk your biscuit. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and pass it. Pass the biscuit. Pass that biscuit. Don't let it fall apart. That biscuit's falling apart. Yeah, that biscuit is uh, You've got to maintain the integrity of the biscuit. I see you. That biscuit was... You gotta swallow it, you gotta swallow that rich tea. You better get it down as quick as you can. Quick, quick, it's a race to guzzle. It's a race to guzzle. Oh, well done. Well done. Give it up for row number one, the custard cream. Excellent, you have all won yourselves a club silly mug to take home at the end of the night. Pretty lush, pretty good, I know. And uh, now we've got, we're almost ready for our next act. 
I know you're all excited. Sip your tea calmly. You can discuss in the interval. We're having an interval right after this act. So relax, sit back, because now we're going to take... Oi! God. I went into the arts to give up teaching. <laughs> All right. We've got another act coming up. And uh, she's going to soothe you. And uh, careful in the front a couple of rows because you might get wet. I know. Um, you'll just have to bear with me. Roger, can you please bring that wheelbarrow over here? I hope you're ready over there. This microphone. Right. Shh. Let's have a little bit of expectation for. Wet work with Maya, Mara, sorry, Mara, Maya, <laughs> Demore. Oh. Which way do I know what you're thinking. Why is a mermaid working as a toilet attendant? Look, well, I, I don't want to bother you because I can see you're washing your hands in it and it's, it's a private moment, but I do just have to say something. <laughs> you look absolutely gorgeous tonight. No, you do, you do that. I mean, if I could pull off that skirt. <laughs> Ain't really realistic, is it? 
No, but you do look like sex on legs right now. I bet the boys be all over you tonight. I mean, uh, let me tell you what I know. Well, I've vet. Well, I have led a lot of men to their watery graves, if you know what I mean. So I know what they go for. I mean, I am a gay mermaid myself, but don't mean I don't know how to handle them. <laughs> if anyone's giving you any grief out there tonight, you come find me. Because I am technically out of the business, but I was a professional love. It's a full-time siren. <laughs> you don't do that for 2,000 years roundabout about picking up a thing or two. <laughs> it's not like it's hard, though. A girl like you to have no trouble. No, I mean it. You ought to think about it. I could put you in touch with the agency. Like, you wouldn't have to do nothing, just sit there with your tits in the air for the most part. <laughs> they had to throw out the old handbook way it is nowadays. And don't get me wrong, I mean, there's no skin off my tail because <laughs> I have quit in it. I mean, shimmied up the U bends and I work here now, don't I? But I've got to think, when I first started, I was all doing the air on a rock, I was like singing them a little song, lull them into a full sense of security. <laughs> Girls nowadays don't even bother with all the foreplay. <laughs> and I ain't being funny or nothing, but I was doing that job day in, Day out, I'd go convention every year, go to all the workshops, brush up my skills, not like it's torpedo science, is it? But <laughs> got to stay sharp. And there's just no sport in it anymore. I mean, let me tell you, my last day, <laughs> I hadn't even started my shift when this great big man saunters up to me like Poseidon's gift to women. <laughs> and he asked me if I want to go swimming. Oh, no, 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 no skinny dipping and don't get me wrong <laughs> I'm happy to apply just all going down same place in it <laughs> but I remember when it was hard work I mean you have to fake a drowning just to get a look in and you're probably thinking it all the men I've killed and being a gay mermaid and all men I've killed gay mermaid men I've killed gay mermaid that uh, I'd be all girl power but fuck me if I wasn't spending every waking minute with men <laughs> and thinking about men and what they like and how they like it. And I don't, I mean, I don't mean nothing by it, you probably got one and all, and I'm sure you like him. I mean, oh, oh okay, all right, I c you like him. All right, I'm just checking, because, I mean, <laughs> the horror stories I've heard of absorbed through the brains I've eaten. You'd run a blooming mile, babes. <laughs> but he is treating you right, though, isn't he? Because, uh, thankfully, I get to meet a lot of women in my new line of work, and I always say to him, I do say, if he isn't off the books, I can take care of that for you. Okay, I can see by your face that was not the right thing to say. <laughs> and I respect that. No, I do, beautiful woman like yourself. I mean, I mean, I, I would, but that's not, that's not the, I'm just saying, I, I know what they're thinking. And I mean, look. We've just met, and I don't know you from an anemone, an 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 anemone in it. But I can tell you with absolute confidence right now, just looking at you, that you deserve better. <laughs> and I, oh, 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 you're, you're going back in, is it? You're going back in, you're having, back for a dance, have a bit of a boogie. No, it's good out there, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I'd join you, but you know what it's like when you're working and... Anyway, I better sit this one out. <laughs> you d oh, you didn't want... No, no, of course not. Uh, what am I thinking? <laughs> uh, have a good time. Uh, be safe. Uh, d don't take no... <laughs> Shit. Well, I've cockled that one up, haven't I?
So smooth. You don't get that at the Barbican, do you? Um, fantastic. Fantastic. We're going to have an interval now for about 20 minutes, which is plenty of time to buy about, what, like five or six drinks? So have at. If you haven't signed up for a massage yet, go and see Laura. She seems like she's occupied. And don't forget to go and visit Izzy, but we'll be back shortly. So enjoy. First row, if you come up to the bar, we'll give you your prize. Oh, wait, what? We're going to watch a film. Oh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I think we're going to roll VT. Okay. Isn't it? This is where we do the. Um... Yeah, but you need to know. You need to know. There's an amazing art house film that's going to go on the screen on a loop. Shush! Asher, now. There's a two minute film that's going to be on a loop on the big screen and on the little screen that features crochet and tea. After the interval, there will be a quiz. Pay attention. Asher, is it there? Oh. Very good. Thank you. Now you can go to the bar. <laughs> 